What's up everybody? This is Mike at Fast Fabs and uh, we're at an install today. It's a it's an average size kitchen. Um, it's got uh, two lowers and then a, a raised bar. We cut everything in one piece so the customer can have as, as little seams as possible. Um, so uh, what I'm going to show you today is how I set a raised bar and put my bar brackets on. Um, so uh, basically, you know, this is our template here. So I set this on here. Now the, the customer has changed her mind. She has changed from wanting tile to wanting a riser uh, backsplash here. So if she was going to go with tile, we would do a standard overhang of say an inch and a half. Um, that's what we normally use as our standard overhang. Now that she wants to go with a granite riser, we're gonna to have to extend that overhang. Normally with a riser, I would go with like two and a quarter, but where she's got such a small amount of overhang on the back, I'm gonna go a little shorter. I'm gonna try, try for two, but I'm probably gonna end up going with an inch and three quarters. That'll still leave us say a half inch sticking over here. I like a little more than that to hide the uh, upper section, but uh, we'll do what we gotta do. Um, so, the first thing I did was I took my little bar brackets here. These are the ones that uh, mount into the two by fours on the knee wall. And I saw how much overhang I could get here and still cover my bracket and still look good. So, it looks like Looks like I should be able to go about an inch and three quarters and still be able to make it work. This customer's had a heck of a time with the contractor and the building of this house, so I'm gonna do everything I can to make this work for her. Um, you know, I, I wanna stay back here where the drywall's at so it doesn't get into my riser. If it does, I can always notch that riser in the back, but it ends up being more work on me. So uh, this is what we're gonna do right here. And we're barely, barely covering in the back here. So, um, for the customers, it's always better to have this plan when the template person comes. But like I said, I'm doing what I can to help this customer out. She's had a really rough time with this job. Not because of us, but because of other people. So, uh, so now that we know what to work on that, we need to mark where we're gonna put these, all right? So, you know, sometimes we'll measure, do some math, uh, you know, split the difference, uh, put it in the middle, whatever. But on this one, we're gonna go with six brackets, two this section, two this section, and two with this section. Um, we could probably get away with a little less, but I don't want her to have any more problems. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go about six inches in here. I am gonna go about six inches in here. I'm gonna go six inches in here. I'm gonna go six inches in here. Six inches here. Six inches here. So we got an equal amount everywhere from the corners and we'll have a good secure bar when we're finished. Now, how these work, as you can see, I marked my center. So, They've got an angle on it like this. You always want this facing up so that it's against the uh, the bar top. Um, you don't want the customer's leg or fingers or anything catching on it if you had it like that. So you do it like that. Um, the idea of these are to make them as invisible as possible and make sure the customer don't like uh, hit her knees or anything like that on it. So we're gonna mark these kind of something like that right there. And you'll see why here in a second. Now you don't have to be crazy precise on these. You 
you want to make sure you can at least get four screws in the in four of these holes up here and you don't have to get it in all six because obviously a two by four is not that wide uh, but uh, i try to make sure i can get at least four you want you want it as strong as possible uh more than more than money, more than pride, more than looks, more than anything else is the customer safety. You do not want to have unsecured brackets, an unsecure bar, and a, a, a five-year-old kid run through here and, you know, stand up, put their weight on the raised bar and fall on and hurt them or kill them. That's more important than anything. So you want to make sure you get enough screws in here to support it. Of course, we're going to silicone it. Every time we do something like this, we put multiple um, ways to prevent it from hurting somebody. Um, so now what we use, I brought it in, I set it over here. Uh, Sammy is doing the filming today. Y'all seen Sammy on probably 90% of my videos. Uh, we're, uh, we're really busy, so I'm trying to knock out some videos while we're on the road installing for Gary to uh, take care of once we get back to the shop. So, uh, we're going to use the Makita grinder. Uh, you've seen me do videos on the Makita. They are they're awesome. And they are by far your number one tool in any granite shop I, w I would think um, they are for me I use them in the shop I use them on the installs this right here is called a brace setter I got it from Braxton and Brad um, that's where I get all my tools from so if you ever hear me talking smack about a tool or like those pads I just reviewed on my other video uh, most of my stuff comes from Braxton and Bragg, so there's some good stuff and some bad stuff, but just understand I'm not bad mouthing Braxton and Bragg. I think they're awesome. Um, it's they they don't know what those particular tools do unless somebody like me tells them or another grand shop. So you hook this to your Makita and you see it's got basically a wood saw right here, okay? So uh that is going to route that wood so that this can set in it and everything will set flush. Um, so we're going to hook it up here and I'll do the filling and I'm going to let Sammy uh, get these out. Pretty much how we do it is I cut the stone, Sammy cuts the wood. And I'm fine to keep it that way because I prefer to have five, four fingers and a thumb on each hand. All right, all right, everybody. This is Sammy. He is way more photogenic than me. Hey, turn it down. Uh, that's our grinding uh, Makita, so it was on five, so Sammy had to turn it down. As you can see, that thing does a real good job of eating that out. It is so much faster than using a, a chisel and a hammer or same as you with the steel saw. He can turn that thing sideways and uh, route it out. But in my opinion, this thing here works pretty good. You like that tool, Sammy? Does it work pretty good, oh, yeah, in your opinion? Good.
Sam has got every one of those cut. Of course, we'll come back and sweep and vacuum all this stuff after. Um, I'm going to show you how one of these fit in here, and uh, then I'm going to uh, stop it, and uh, we'll get back to you in a minute. Uh, we're getting on about 11 minutes here, so uh, I'm trying not to make the video super long. I know you guys don't like watching them that long. Um, so kind of that's what we got right there. Um, and we'll pre-drill the holes, and then I've got some... Uh, six by two inch uh, drywall screws here. And that's what we're gonna pop in here. These uh, brackets I use, you can see that, I don't know the correct terminology for it, but they're, uh, the hole's bigger on one side than it is the other, so that those screw faces will set down in there. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. If, uh, you put a screw in this side right here you see how it just kind of sticks up there a little bit not a lot but a little bit now if you take this screw out and you flop that thing over it's it's inset in there so uh it's nice and smooth so um i like these brackets uh these are 10 inch you can get them in 10 12 18 20 24 you can get them in all different sizes and you can get them with short L's on them. But in my opinion, a big metal bar going down the side of your knee wall just don't look good. Um, so I'm going to pause it for now, guys. And uh, I'll get back to you after we get these things mounted up. All right, I saved this last one here uh, so you guys could see how we do it. So all we do is we uh, put this here on there. Mark it with this black marker. Then we uh, got a drill with a little drill bit on it. We'll drill pilot holes so we don't bust the tube before. Well, if I wasn't filming, that would have never happened. got that in there and we always run a bead of silicone down the center like I say we kind of double up on everything and uh, grab our drill grab our six by two inch screws here and uh, put this on a hole Then we're using this here. Just kind of make sure we get it nice and square. And what Sammy been doing is putting a screw right here in the front, hang on it back to hold it in place. So I will attempt to do the same thing. Looks like it did it pretty good. Now we're back to square. And you always got a little bit of play. You can adjust it. Uh, you know, after everything's said and done, but you want to get it as um, close to uh, square as possible. We actually managed to get our six screws in here. Um, That's it. So this one looks like it might be watered down just a hair. And if that ends up being the case, we can loosen up these in the front and put a shim under there. We can shim it here and then caulk it out. Um, but same if you'll paint around there and show them the other six we got there. Or the other five. And that's what we got. And that's how our right bar will sit on there. Um, all the front is flush with the drywall, so we don't have that sticking over, so we don't have to worry about notching that raised bar. And it's all nice and flush, so that's how we set up our uh, bar brackets on our knee wall to 
set a raised bar. And when we get it all set and stuff, I'll, I'll show you guys what it looks like in the end. So um, that's it for now. So we got the raised bar in place. It's not squared up yet. Um, if I would have been with anybody else, I don't think we'd have got it in. And I tell you, I think the Lord was with us today too. This was a really, really tough raised bar to get up and sat on this knee wall in one piece without any seam. So I'm very thankful to the Lord helped us. And I'm very thankful I had Sammy. And I just want to show you guys all these bars. I have to take them off and put them on this piece, which I made in one piece also. So uh, anyways, I'll show you the finished product here in a bit. Okay, this is the finished product of uh, the job we were at today. The customer was asking about the roughness on the drywall, which uh, these are just rough cuts on drywall when you have the top of the meat wall. Um, usually what they'll put is something like that to trim it around. They do the same thing if they have like gaps in the cabinets, if they're off level. It's it's 100% common. Also, they need to put some kind of piece of trim there where they dug those screws in there. Um, there's a few little issues that they need to address. Um, oh, I'll worry about that. Okay. Um, Freestanding range goes right there. Make sure you have 30 inches. Painter's caulk's good. One whole faucet, which we discussed. Um, raised bar set. Um, six brackets. Floors clean and swept up. Um, 